The Voyage for me is one of, if not the best, trad first ascent that I've ever done. It is an absolute miracle of nature that this thing works. There's just enough holes that you can link them together and go all the way from the bottom to the top. Alright, there you go. So yeah. We are in Nanot in the south of France doing some uh, trout climbing on some sandstone. And um, how did we get here? Well, uh, basically because we wanted to try this route, no? Uh, Le Voyage. It's a beautiful climb, it was put up or like first climbed by a friend of us, James Pearson. I remember that he told us that he climbed this amazing line and we saw some pictures. Or I think it was the reason why we wanted to come, come here first. I'm currently halfway up. Uh, my project, really a, a dream come true. There's, there's very few lines like this around, or at least that I've ever seen. I was really amazed when, I, when we first got here. Uh, I heard that it was good, like the sandstone was really good, but I didn't expect such a place. Like the rock is incredible, it has these amazing features, with, like big holes and wackos and crazy features. Anot is uh, famous for climbers and non-climbers alike. It's got all these amazing little hiking trails that lead up onto this big hillside covered in huge sandstone walls and it's just a, a lovely place to, to spend time. There's like a mixture of like sport climbs, thread climbs, there's cracks. It, they have bouldering as well. <laughs> I mean, there is bouldering. It's really well. like a magic place. You can find everything and uh, I think you just have to search for it. Yeah. There's a huge potential. Anot is also famous with non-climbers just because of its spectacular rock architecture. Even as a non-climber you can't help but be amazed when you walk into somewhere like that for the first time. Yeah, the route is uh, a real voyage, it's like a really long route, it's I think 40 meters or something like that, maybe even more. It's very impressive when you enter in Le Chambre du Roi, it's the sector, you go into this tunnel and you think you're just gonna pass a little tunnel and then you look up and it's this huge wall, flat wall, and uh, when I arrived I saw the rope hanging and I didn't realize, oh, that, that's, that's it, that's actually the wall. Like, <laughs> I think what nice. is really cool is it's such a big wall but there is just one line yeah. through it, yeah. so it's that makes it even more special. I think the line itself is really cool because you fall off this first crack and then the crack stops and you have this like crazy traverse. It looks really blank from down and then you have just these three, four pockets that make the traverse possible and then you get back to the crack. You climb a few moves, place a bit of gear, climb a few moves, place some more good gear, and then you get to what is for me the most spectacular part of the route. A smooth blank wall that would otherwise be totally impossible if it wasn't for the inclusion of several little amazing pockets. And if one or two of them didn't exist, the route simply wouldn't work. And these pockets lead you into the main crack of the route where most of the real difficulty can be found. And uh, the first part of the crack is still okay and then there is this hard section on the very top. Play some gear and you run out and then you get to a really good jog and then the last part is still... Yeah, it's you, not hard but like you can definitely fall. You can fuck it up in yeah. your head as well or you can make a little zipper. You can definitely fall at the end yeah. if, you, if you're unlucky. Oh, it's so much strength in the leg. To try and save a little bit of energy for the top, Caroline suggested about not clipping the last piece of gear and relying on a, on a nut in the flake. So I decided to give it a go. And then, uh, well, this happened. Never, ever has that happened to me before. The fall was, I mean, okay, it was big, but it wasn't giant, and that's not even a tiny nut. It's a number two super light. I heard a big bang in the fall, and that's all that's left of that nut. So yeah, it's uh, it's an adventure up here. It's still like it's a mental game because you have to climb this uh, long section yeah. without any protections, and uh, yeah, even if you know that it's safe, you still have to like be focused on the climbing and not yeah. be scared. So uh, I think it's a really cool style. Oh. 
gua. <laughs> where you can just chill before start climbing. It's really nice when you do like a proper attempt because you can just get inside, rest and cool down because cool it's down. very cool. <laughs> it's a deep cave. <laughs> What the fuck? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> this is so nice. <laughs> Alright, take a go. Super fun. Woo! Oh. Such a cool. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh. It's so bumpy. I got the, the nerve bump. <sighs> like you said. Oh man. <laughs> The Voyage for me is one of, if not the best, trad first ascent that I've ever done. It is an absolute miracle of nature that this thing works. There's just enough holds that you can link them together, one after another, and go all the way from the bottom to the top. When I saw our first movie of Le Voyage from James, I couldn't really believe this was a route in, um, in France, and it's so big. Such a big yeah, line. It's, really it's really not just a, a piece of rock of uh, 10 meters with one piece of protection, but it's really a voyage. And I think it's hard to find like a hard line which is climbable on gear. It's not too sketchy because as soon as it gets hard, then you have like less rock features, so it's harder to find some gear. But so I think that also what makes yeah. the route really special. I don't know if you realize it, but really like purple. 